Hey guys, today we're over at Armstrong Garden Center in Santa Monica. We're going to take a look at what tropical houseplants they have inside. So here's the general kind of houseplant section. It's pretty small, but they have your common rubber trees, things like that. You've got a photonia over here in the center, some spath, the peace lily, of course, but a good like general selection, which you would expect, especially in LA. Here is the platinum spath. I really love this plant. It's just really pretty great veination. But generally the plants here are kind of expensive. They've got the, the split leaf philodendron, which is a Monstera deliciosa. I can't stand when people call it that because there's actually a split leaf. But the silver sword, I think that's what this is called. Yep, the philodendron silver sword. I love that plant, it's so pretty. And of course the Adansonii. Uh, it looks to be in a six inch pot, maybe this is eight, but 40 bucks. Yeah, six inch pot for 40 bucks. Pretty steep, especially in 2023. There was a time when that was normal. They have a bunch of different philodendrons. As you can tell, this is kind of my favorite, and this would be the plant I'm trying to get. And this specimen is actually pretty good looking. You can see the aerial roots coming out. Of course, I'm always down to chop and prop these, so that's good for me to see. But there you see some leaf damage. And for 25 bucks, being one of the more rare plants here, it's actually a decent deal. It's not great, but it's not too bad. But you can see that leaf damage there. Looks like it got squished, but there's definitely a general like fungal copper spotting on most of these plants. That's pretty common. And that's a fungal infection. This looks like a black cardinal philodendron. They have some pretty cool philodendrons, but nothing like really rare. This looks like an imperial. Oh yeah, this is still the black cardinal, but imperial red, imperial green. These are pretty common philodendrons from like the 90s that have been around for a long time and have been in cultivation. Here's a deliciosa. Uh, 20 bucks for six inch pot, decent leaves, kind of banged up. The plant quality here wasn't great. Everything kind of seemed over watered a bit. And there's a golden philodendron, just kind of like a green style. And then Macaulay's fina finale. I'm actually never have heard of that one. Obviously some Dracenas, but this is my favorite silver sword. Really pretty, nice and tall, has a bunch of cuts on it, which is great. And for 25 bucks, you can't really go wrong. This is kind of the, the deal of the day, but see that spot right there that kind of worries me and i'm checking the back of the leaves obviously for pests because that's what we do check the back of the leaves calathea orbifolia you can't help but have browned edges on this plant you've got to water with a water that doesn't have chlorine or chloramine in it essentially not tap water and you have to have your humidity high and you have to let that plant not get dry 25 bucks for an orbifolia it's kind of okay but you know leaf quality calatheas love spider mites or rather spider mites love calatheas so i don't know you're kind of getting a mixed bag there but all the brown leaves hard to avoid can't blame them for that but take out the tap water this syndapsis just had huge leaves was generally pretty happy i guess for 25 bucks it's okay but these are all pretty on the high side for a six inch that plant is not very popular then we got the painted lady there's like a group of painted ladies here not really healthy honestly pretty overwatered and we've got the big mama burgundy princess just kidding that's a pink princess but doesn't have a lot of pink on it and the price is honestly outrageous um maybe a few years back maybe in 2020 people were doing that it's kind of tall it's like three feet tall but it's just a philodendron arubinescence essentially with a little bit of pink striping I try to check the stem to see what we're doing here to try, to like, try and justify it, but there's just not a lot of pink there for $250. But the painted ladies, they're looking all right, but pretty overwatered, a lot of leaf damage on them and probably some pests. 25 bucks, meh, decent for kind of a really unhealthy plant. It probably has root rot. Alocasia elephant's ear black. I've just always loved this plant, but just be careful with spider mites. It's just kind of a spider mite infested plant. Typically, I didn't get the price on this one, but they're usually like 50 to 75 bucks, especially in Santa Monica, kind of like a retail garden shop instead of wholesale. This is a fun Syngonium. I love Syngoniums and it almost looks like a pink splash for 20 bucks or 19 bucks. It has a ton of different shoots on it and a bunch of different cuts. I know it's just a pot of film with some pinking to it, um, but I would probably get that one. 
This is something from Costa Farm, so I wanted to check it out. It is a Syndapsis Moonlight Tribui, I believe. Tribui, I can't pronounce that. But 35 bucks, it comes with a ceramic pot. Again, you've got a lot of that leaf spot. You see all those brown rust spots? That's typically from a fungal infection. And when that spreads in a nursery, it's everywhere. This is one of my favorite calatheas or calatheas, however you say it, however you say it. Let's see, this is the Ornato, or rather, I always call it like the pink striped. I just think it's incredibly colored for what it is. 50 bucks, kind of steep, um, but it is what it is. And then I'm obviously inspecting the calathea leaves for spider mites. And of course the browning is just a part of it in the Maranta ACA family. So you need to avoid tap water or something that contains chlorine or chloramine. Really pretty waxy ZZs. They probably sprayed this leaf shine on it. That's actually a split leaf philodendron. And here we go, the Pileas or Pilea, however you say it. I actually didn't get a price on these guys, but they were really cute and were just like generally healthy and leaves were not broken, which is shocking. Little Deliciosas, which are always fun to grow. This one, I believe is like 10 bucks. So like decent start, but Del Deliciosas are all over. I was kind of shocked they didn't have any sort of really variegated plants except for the pink princess. Obviously there's some variegation in here. Here's the alocasia, really pretty, but again, you're gonna have that leaf burn, that kind of browning off. It's just really common. I'm a sucker for aglonemas. I love a big Chinese evergreen and there's a bunch of different varieties. They're so easy to grow. It's one of the first houseplants we actually ever got maybe seven years ago. Well, one of the first few ones. Kind of expensive for 50 bucks. I always go back to the spat. This was one of our most popular products on Etsy. This is actually what built our Etsy store. We've probably sold, I don't know, 30 or 50,000 of these plants. In the four inch pot, we've actually grown them from tissue culture ourselves. And the Neantha Bella palm, the Bella palm or bamboo palm, uh, look at those spider mites. This is why I hate this plant. We used to grow it, but every plant always has the spider mites on it. It's funny when people just don't realize what bugs are on their plant, check the back sides. You can at least prune this plant back and remove those leaves and the new shoots will come back. You can kind of deadhead it, but eight bucks, decent deal. The plant has bugs. Uh, another mother, <laughs> another Maranta, and you know that already has spider mites. Now kind of getting into like the different products they have, love to see worm castings there. Be careful with just grabbing like systemic granules. People talk about this all the time, but it has imiclopurid. This is what is killing off the honeybees. And it's really toxic to humans, animals, bugs, obviously everyone. So be careful with that. And also just a mite X had a bunch of different oils in it. So read the active ingredients. Down to Earth is one of my favorite organic brands, no affiliation, but they have just really great products. So is Dr. Earth. Try and go organic when you can. The plants are around your family and pets. Love to see seaweed liquid kelp on the shelves. It's a great product. This one doesn't seem too diluted because it says four ounces per gallon and it's like 20 bucks. Not as dilute or not as strong as I wanted to see it. Vitamin B1, always helpful to have, kind of expensive, but man, that's a ton. You'll have that forever. Stay away from the miracle Grow. This is an interesting product. It's called pruning sealer. I assume it's for kind of outdoor trees, but might be good to use on our monsteras and our bigger cuttings. Down here, this, by, this product by Bonide is kind of interesting, wilt stop. I did some research into the active ingredient and it's called pining. Essentially, it's a terpene or a scent from the pine tree or from cannabis. Worm castings in the shop. Probably the best deal here, 30 bucks for like 20 or 30 pounds of it is useful. And it said it has rock dust and kelp in it, which is very useful for houseplants. A little fish fertilizer, because I know a lot of you guys use it, but I don't use it because it smells really bad, but high in nitrogen, that's that five. Here you go, neem oil. This, just be really careful, read the active ingredient. It contains clarified hydrophobic neem oil, which is what is left over after you take out the important azadiractin, which actually kills the spider mites. Again, another neem oil. And be really careful with the RTU products, which is ready to use because it's already been diluted with water. So you're buying mostly water and a little bit of product in the concentration. You have plenty of water at home. And also friends don't let friends buy plastic plants. Don't do this. This is ridiculous. Buy a real plant in your garden. And we've got some Osmocote. I love Osmocote. Um, I'm actually trying out Nutricote right now. But Osmocote has worked really well. Just go light on it and I can't stand this product. This is leaf shine, and it's just like a silica waxy thing you put onto your plant, and likely will clog the pores of the plant. 
just use neem oil if you want to do a leaf shine or something like a garlic oil or something that will actually pest prevent at the same time while shining your leaves if you're going to go in there and do each one. I hope you guys enjoyed this type of video where I walk around at Garden Center and kind of give you my thoughts. I promise I'll get better with going in there with the full selfie mode camera, but it just feels weird to me, but I have to get over that. And if you guys like this kind of content, please click the like button down below so I know that you like this type of content and I'll do more of this type of content in the future. So thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next Saturday for another video about houseplants.